morning, everyone, and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh Show, and I'm reviewing the market today. Why? Because it's the only thing a normal person could do. It needs to be reviewed, so I guess I'm going to do it here with the room. Let's just figure out. So, we had this day here, which as I did and talked about in the previous videos and the emails, it was an anomaly. A strange occurrence that happens that is unexpected and can't be predicted. But what can be predicted? When something happens in the live day, after it happens, then you can predict what it's going to do. And when I rated the gap, it didn't rate as a good short. And it wasn't a short, and it didn't play out as a short, and it rallied big time. It actually swooshed and reversed. You did nothing. This was nothing to do then. I was surprised we fell this hard on this day, but everybody panicked then after this. And that's this is the panic coming in on a gap up. But it didn't go anywhere. Why we gapped up then the next day and held. Then we gapped up this day and definitely held. Then we got down, went nowhere, and yesterday I said neutral. We really didn't go anywhere yesterday at all. But when I got this morning, I looked at this, I thought, all right, we're definitely in a placement where I didn't expect us to gap down today. Now, I'm not saying it's a big gap down. In my world, this isn't, but I knew it wasn't a short, but I really wasn't expecting us to gap down this much. Like, if we had gapped down today, I didn't think we would this much. I didn't know if we'd gap down or gap up today. I actually thought we'd be neutral. And try to hold, try to hold, try to hold. We're trying to hold in a gap down. We are so far today in the first 30 minutes, but I don't know where we go with it. Let's just find the numbers here of everything. Are we trying to hold? And here's where we're trying to hold. We are trying to hold in support. So we did gap down. We gap down to this area of support today and we're trying to hold it now i don't know if we do and i'm not saying if we don't that we're going to fall off a planet because we're still higher in the overall picture we still are but i will tell you that there's a lot of people that are very confused that are stressed out that have lost money in the last week and a half and don't know what to do about it and you know you gotta have conviction the market's higher rather than panicking. I still, still am saying we're higher. Now let me just look and see here exactly. We went, we did not get up to 200. So I think until we get above 200 in the spy I'm talking about here, we're not gonna take off like a rocket. And I don't know how that happens. In other words, we may have to gap up over it. It's most likely we gap up over it. But we could train up over it and through it and above it. But it's better if we gap up over it. I don't know if we will. It's most likely that we will. But we could trade on up above it. But I don't know how we get there from here. That's the problem. And Coco Loco was asking something about something. He's like, well, when are we done with the choppiness? We're not done with the choppiness. I wasn't sure if we'd be done by Friday. I thought we would be, but we're not. It's clear today that we're not. Yesterday was just a Monday. Today is, though, a Tuesday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And money is a holiday. We're not going to get out of this choppiness until September. And it is September 1st, but until after the holiday. So I don't know if it's next week. I don't know if it's the following week. But we're not going to get out of it before Labor Day. Because too many people leave and go on vacation. There is a lot of low volume in the market today. This is just not enough people at all. Nobody cares. And maybe everyone is just saying the same thing as me. Wait. Wait. Be a picky poo. Do nothing unless it's perfect. Per pull yourself off the ledge. These are the kinds of days that traders insist on trading and lose money. Because to be honest with you, I didn't call the market long today, but it's not a short either. There's no play here in the market. And to be honest with you, that's the problem. Until the market situates itself and people have conviction again the market's higher, they're going to get scared every morning when they get up and see the market gapping down because of what happened last week. They're going to be scared if they see any red at all, whether it's in a day of trading red or a gap down, and people will sell, regular people. But institutions aren't selling here. So that's what you have. And I don't know how we close today. I mean, this is actually so unusual that we're even doing this. I don't even know where we close today. We could drop, break the low, which is around 193, fall, and fall all day all the way down to 190 and have a big red day. We could hold at the low of the day here, hold, flip, rally all the way back up to the high. I mean, that is how choppy and unpredictable this is acting intraday. In the longer term picture, we're still higher at this point, at this point, okay? We're still higher at this point. I'm not ruling out that we could break. 
I'm not going to rule that out, but I don't think it's going to happen. Wow, did you see that invisible tick? Did everybody just see that invisible tick? <gasps> yeah, Mew, I already called Mew like an hour ago. I mean, you should already be in the Mew if you're in it. Wow, did everyone just see that invisible tick though? It was a spike up. If you wanted to do anything today, the thing to do was the Mew, which I kind of figured. 197, 69. Um, I guess I did something else here. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I just, we're, we're, we're still higher, but it looks very sloppy. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. I don't, I don't, there's nothing else I can say but that. Here, look, we're trying to break the low of the day right in here. Let's let's just watch this right now live and see if we hold it or not. The only way we hold it is buying, and I'm not sure the buying is going to come in in this year today. Why? Because we did gap down. We did gap down, and we rallied on the open and went over the high a couple times, but it wasn't aggressive, and that's why I didn't end up calling it long. I saw the training on the day, but I didn't want to call it long. I just, here, we're going to break the low. Yeah, I have no idea where we go now. This week, I mean, in the bigger picture, we're still higher, but this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's going to be Chop City, USA. And we are not doing anything unless it's absolutely perfect. It's almost got to be beyond perfect. It's almost like I get up in the morning now and think we should do NCOFs and nothing else until the market has situated itself. And I'm not saying we won't get any this week, because quite frankly, we could. The one I talked about for tomorrow morning, we absolutely could. And there's another one this week we absolutely could. But I'm not going to say it because I don't want to jinx the... <gasps> Wait, we didn't break the low yet. Hello! We did not. What this is like, it's a tug of war. That's the best way I could describe this. It's a tug of war right now. Should we buy? Should we sell? Should we buy? Should we sell? Buyers, sellers, buyers, sellers. Short it. This is what's going on right now. You've got a little bit of everything and then some. But at the end of the day, who's in charge? Who's in charge of the market? The people that are setting the tone of what is happening in the overall trend, and that's the bulls. And that has not changed, despite the massive gap down that happened last week, the weird, weird anomaly of a gap down that rated poorly. But as we discussed last week, the open of that gap down, the poorly rated gap down that opened and swooshed and reversed itself is a sign and confirmation that, in fact, there is one person in charge in this chart, and it is the bulls, and they are in charge, because that would never, never have happened. Never anywhere in the planet could anything happen and occur like that, and I've actually never seen anything like it. Not the gap down, per se. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that the ETF and the markets, both in the Qs and the SPIs, which didn't have to do it, but they'd happen in both the ETFs, in the SPI and the QQQs, actually opened and swooshed, and the swoosh was reversed and did not follow through. I have never seen that in the markets. I've never seen a swoosh in the markets, period, let alone one that failed. And I'm telling you right now, or I shouldn't say failed, it never set up, it just reversed. But I'm telling you that was a sign. It's a sign of who is in charge in the building, okay? And it is the bulls. And that sign is telling me the market's higher, along with everything else, which is the gaps. And also, I really think that's going to end up being the low. I think that's going to be the low of the market for a long time. And it could have been this area up here, which is holding for a while um, here. <clears throat> but the problem is that we didn't have enough momentum underway to lift off. And when that didn't happen and a series of gap downs took place, we broke it. We broke this here. We broke it. This could have held for a long time. It's trying to make a new area in here now. It's going to be basically around this 200 level because that's where we have to get up above again to take off and I just don't think it's going to happen before Labor Day. So very choppy market here for everybody. This is Melissa Arma with the stock swoosh. If you have any questions email me at melissa at the stock swoosh.com. Have a great day everyone.